Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the YouTube made me buy it video. It's kind of like a tag video that's been going around for the longest amount of time. So I compiled a lot of things that YouTube has made me buy probably about two years ago in 2014. I remember that summer I was actually researching to get a makeup subscription service. So I started finding YouTube videos that would review Ipsy and all these other services and I ended up subscribing to both Ipsy and BoxyCharm. So those are actually the first two things that YouTube made me buy. And then from there, stem the rest of this stuff. So if you guys want to know everything that YouTube has made me spend my money on, and whether I thought it was worth the money or not, then please just keep watching. So the very first thing that I bought from YouTube, apart from BoxyCharm and Ipsy, was a blush from the drugstore. And it was because I had heard or read an article or something online that the Milani baked blushes had a color that was an exact dupe or so it was thought of the NARS orgasm blush and of course at the time I didn't think it was worth it I could not justify spending $30 on a blush so thanks to little lady Lori her name is Stephanie Lori I found her YouTube channel two summers ago she was talking about how the Milani baked blush in Luminoso is a pretty close dupe for the NARS orgasm blush and honestly I actually own the NARS orgasm blush now and I a hundred times over prefer this color, this blush, the formula, everything. I feel like the NARS Orgasm blush is very chunky, it's a little bit glittery, it's very patchy when you apply it, and it's a little bit too strong. I actually don't like the color. It's a little bit too pink. This is a little bit more peachier, it's shimmery, but it has a nice soft sheen to it. It's not patchy, it's very easy to blend. I feel like this color would be flattering on so many different skin tones, and it's about five dollars. So I'm so glad that Stephanie was reviewing some Milani products on her channel the day that I discovered YouTube and the beauty community because I bought that blush straight away. The next thing that I know a lot of people who have made this video mention this exact same product because YouTube definitely made us buy this and that's the Urban Decay Naked Palettes and I have a problem where I like to save my makeup and keep it safe so what I do is I keep them in their original boxes and I feel like this will prolong the wear and the quality of the product but yes I definitely caved. I actually bought the Naked 2 palette first then I bought the Naked and then I ended up getting Naked 3 and honestly they're great they're nice but for $54 a palette that is so expensive I remember when I actually bought the first two palettes I had over $30 of points at Ulta so I saved some money but honestly you can do better at the drugstore there are other high end brand palettes that are more affordable and that do the exact same thing. I don't think $54 is worth it for a palette. And honestly, if I had to count how many times I've used these palettes, it would probably add up to one hand, maybe five times or less. I haven't used them that often. But surprisingly enough, the one I thought I would use the least, which is the Naked 3, because it's more pinks, plums, and mauves, is the one I've used the most out of these three. I'm not saying it was a waste of my money to buy these. They hold a special place in my heart because they are one of the first things that I bought that was high-end because of YouTube, and I associate it with people that I was watching on YouTube talking about these and sharing tutorials with these. So I don't really regret purchasing these, but I have found in time better palettes for a lot less price, but they still stay in my little collection. And then speaking of other palettes that are better priced that I think are more worth your money is this next little guy that YouTube also made me purchase, and Stephanie, mentioned this one quite a bit and she used it a lot in everyday tutorials and it is the Naked Urban Decay Basics palette. Just your typical matte shades with one shimmering highlighting shade in the top. Really love this palette. I think it's in that $20 range so it's half the price or less than the Naked palettes. Yes you don't have those shimmery bright metallic shades in here but I honestly reach for this one way more than the other Naked palettes so I highly recommend this one. I love this palette so much. I travel with it all the time because so many girls that I was subscribed to were showing tutorials with these palettes and they are the Lorac Pro and the Lorac Pro 2. Both gorgeous palettes. I would never give them away. I think they're amazing. The color, pigmentation, quality, blendability, wearability, awesome range of colors. They're a little bit less expensive than Naked palettes. I think these are in the $40 range versus the $50. Highly recommend, but I would definitely go swatch them in the store and figure out which palette of colors you'd wear more and just go for one or the other. You don't necessarily need to have both. And then I splurged on a couple of bronzers thanks to YouTube. So well, the first one was a disappointment for me, and it's the Bronzing Powder from MAC in Refine Golden. This actually made its way into one of my disappointing product videos. It looks beautiful. It has kind of a reddish, golden, bronzy sheen to it. It's really, really pretty. And when you swatch it, it's gorgeous. But once you go to put this onto your face, it's almost too red. But that's not the only reason I didn't like it. It's because it's very patchy. It's hard to blend. It's very obvious when you're wearing this one, so I don't like it was not worth the money, dislike this, wish I had not purchased that. And then of course I had to pick up after seeing so many videos, Australian YouTubers, American YouTubers, British YouTubers, they were all raving over the Hoola Benefit Bronzing Powder. And I remember when I first purchased this, I really didn't know how to contour. I was so new to bronzer because before I discovered YouTube videos and makeup tutorials, 
I never wore bronzer. I only wore blush, lipstick, a little mascara, and eyeliner, and that was it. I didn't wear a highlight, I didn't do any of that. I feel like my makeup has improved a lot thanks to YouTube. Bank account may not be so happy, but I'm pretty happy with all the stuff I picked up. And when I first bought it, I didn't like it because I didn't know how it, like I said, I didn't know how to use bronzer, I didn't know how to contour, and I felt like it just looked like this big, muddy, brown mess. And then I learned how to contour and how to create a line that you kind of just connect to the tip of your ear and just kind of bring it down, not all the way to your mouth. That's what I was doing. I was getting too close. And actually the little brush that comes in here is very, very, very comparable to the Narzita brush and it's free because it basically comes with the box of powder. When I worked at Ulta, I would put this bronzer on everybody and everybody would buy it because it just looks so good on everyone. I don't know what is in this little box, but it's magical. I highly recommend this bronzer. It's great. And then YouTube made me buy three highlighters, so I thought I'd put them in this cute little Ipsy bag. This is actually the Ipsy makeup bag for October. I thought it was so adorable. And yes, I'm still an Ipsy subscriber. To be honest, I don't always love everything I get in every bag, but for $10, you get a cute makeup bag, and there's always at least two or three products out of the five that you like. And then you have a couple things that you can give away to friends. And this is actually another cute little makeup bag that I got from Ipsy. I don't remember when, if it was last year, but I just think it's adorable. It says, contents, pretty important stuff, and it shows mascara and lipstick and all kinds of cute little makeup things. So these three highlighters that YouTube made me buy are Max Mineralized Skin Finish in Soft and Gentle. It's the highlight I'm wearing today. It's a nice slightly pearlescent pink. I really like this highlight. I think it's pretty but it's very natural so if you don't use a very compact highlighting brush I don't feel like you really really see it but once you use the right brush it's perfect. And then I picked up these two Becca highlights. And no, it's not Champagne Pop. I didn't buy that one. Actually, I got that one thanks to my sister-in-law. She bought it and only used it a couple of times and gave it to me. So I lucked out on that one. But before Champagne Pop even existed, YouTube was all about Opal and Moonstone. Opal is almost a peachy kind of bronzy highlight, whereas Moonstone is more of a yellow gold white highlight, if that makes sense. They're both beautiful. I love them. I'm glad I did purchase them because I do wear them often. They may be pricey, but the fact that they're so pigmented means that a little bit goes a long way so these will last you for years and years and years and if you apply them wet oh my god they are so incredible definitely worth it this next thing is something i didn't technically buy but i did do a makeup exchange with one of my friends and she sent this to me and it's because of youtube that she sent it to me it's a nars duo that has nars orgasm and nars laguna and i wanted to mention it because i actually did buy the full size pan of Nars Laguna. This is a great bronzer. Again, it's very neutral and flattering, just like the Hula bronzer, and just a little bit creamier than Hula. Couldn't find my full-size pan because I've moved, so it's somewhere in this room, but for now I did find this little duo, and I had to mention that YouTube also made me buy Nars Laguna. This was kind of a disappointment purchase because it was really pricey, and it was because of someone's favorites video on YouTube, and it's the La Vanilla Laboratories Instant Hydration Healthy Body Butter in Pure Vanilla. It's vanilla. I love everything vanilla, but this is a weird scent. The scent is almost a sickly sweet warm vanilla, but it smells like other sweet things more than it does vanilla, if that makes sense. And the fact that it was over $20 for a body lotion is why I found it disappointing. YouTube made me buy the Nivea Men Sensitive Post Shave Balm that's supposed to soothe skin, reduce any redness, irritation, stuff like that, and it's supposed to over time make your skin stronger and healthier. This was supposed to be a primer. Five dollars, you can find it at Target, you can find it at the drugstore. I used it a couple times. It definitely did hold my makeup together longer, look prettier, smoother, more fresh, but I've recently learned that this isn't really good for your skin. If you are using this every day to prime your skin with before applying your makeup, it can tend to clog your pores and cause breakouts. So I'm glad that you YouTube taught me about it because at the time it was fun and I'll always associate this with YouTube, but it's a disappointment because now I don't want to use it anymore and I have over 90% of the product left because I don't want to break out, so I pass on this. YouTube made me buy two MAC lipsticks. YouTube made me buy a lot of MAC lipsticks, but these two in particular came to mind when I wanted to sit down and film this video. They are Matte Stone and Matte Whirl. Matte Stone is a beautiful darkened brown kind of gray color. Kind of like what I'm wearing right now, except that's not what I'm wearing. I'll get into that next. But it's a really pretty unique color, so I am glad that I purchased this. And MAC isn't that expensive. I think they're $16 a lipstick compared to $20 and $30 that some other brands are. And then Whirl is more of a pretty kind of rosy mauve, really beautiful color. It's probably not as unique to anything else I may already own in my collection, but I fell on that whole hype train and I purchased this little guy. I don't regret it though, because it holds a special place in my heart. 
And speaking of lipsticks, YouTube also made me buy the NARS Audacious Lipsticks. Guys, these are $30 a pop. They're pricey. I cannot believe I bought 10 of them. 10! Luckily, I did have some gift cards and I waited for the VIP sales and stuff like that where I would get 20 and 30% off. I would use promo codes and coupons. I'll make sure to list these below because it's going to take forever to go through them. I would say that they're worth the price because they're very good quality. But at the same time, I feel like you can find beautiful, amazing, long-wearing lipsticks at the drugstore for a lot less. So I definitely won't be buying anymore. I'll just make good use of my little collection of 10. YouTube also made me go crazy and buy a million of the Ofra liquid lipsticks. They're pretty good. They have a nice whipped consistency. They're more mousse-like. That's the best description. They're very mousse-like. They're a little bit thicker in consistency, but they dry down quickly. They're not patchy. They don't crack and crumble in the inner part of the lips. I feel like they do last a long time. You can eat and drink with them and the color will remain throughout the day. So they are worth it. I just think that the price tag on their website is a little bit too much. They're in that 19 to $20 range. I think I got 40% off actually on these. So they ended up costing me like $6 each or $7 each with free shipping. So it was worth it. Um, I have a rainbow of colors. So I definitely have my options to choose from. Some more lip products that YouTube made me spend my money on is this Buxom full on lip cream in the infant this white Russian is just a nice light pink kind of sheer gloss. It smells good, it kind of reminds me of maple syrup, and it feels tingling, fresh, and cooling on the lips. It's a great lipstick topper, it's a great everyday gloss. I like to wear this in the morning to wake me up, and I'm glad I purchased it. It's $20, but I still have so much product left, so I'm glad I picked it up. And then YouTube also made me purchase the Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipstick in the now famous name Lolita. I like this color. It's the perfect everyday mauve in liquid lipstick form. So I definitely don't regret this one. YouTube also made me purchase a ton of ColourPop products, everything from lip stuff. I'm actually wearing one of their Ultra Satin Lips in the shade 0, and I've mixed it with one of the Ofra Liquid Lipsticks in the shade Miami Fever to give a little bit of a burnt oranginess to the center part. So I have a bunch of ColourPop eyeshadows. I have ColourPop lip products, a lot of ColourPop Morphe palettes. I have a ton of those. I think they're definitely worth the price. They're around that $20 range for over 30 shadows. I have so many. I have actually posted videos on whether they were worth the hype or not. Makeup Geek eyeshadows. I own a bunch of Z palettes filled with their eyeshadows. They're affordable. They're so pigmented. They're better than MAC. I highly recommend Makeup Geek if you have not checked them out. And I think that's it. Most of the stuff, I don't regret purchasing it. My bank account might, but I don't. Some of it I do wish I had passed on. Now that I've been watching videos on YouTube for a good two years now, I can kind of decipher and see for myself what's worth the money or not instead of going crazy like I used to and making these lists and just buying everything that so-and-so on YouTube said I had to have. Thanks again for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.